Welcome back, Shalliners. You're still here stuck with me on YouTube, but I'm gonna keep pumping out these videos. I'm gonna try to do one a day, if not more, because quite frankly, I have nothing better to do. I'm here in Newport Beach with my mom, and I was, I was coming through here on the way to Bali, which I'm not going to be able to do now, and there was another trip that I might go on, and if that doesn't happen, I'm like, wait, I'm, I'm like actually gonna have to stay here, like, I, I'm, you guys know I travel a ton and I'm really not used to having like my wings clipped and so this is very hard on me. This is hard on me. This is like way harder on me than anyone else. What an asshole I am. I'm, it's not hard on me. I mean, YouTuber, this is what I do. But what we're gonna talk about today is something you guys have been asking for for a minute <clears throat> and I was really kind of like, ugh, I don't wanna cover this because I feel like I have, but it's The Bachelor finale and how a dude named Peter um, blew it by going, by ultimately choosing the girl his parents did not like, and to the surprise of absolutely no one, probably including the girl herself, Madison, it like ended in a ball of flames, right? So I've done a lot of videos on what to do if your parents don't like your boyfriend, if your boyfriend's parents don't like you, if your friends don't like your boyfriend, if you don't like your friend's boyfriends, blah, blah, blah. I've, and so I was like, I don't want to do this topic again. It's like, I feel like I've just rehashed this. But then I thought, you know what? You know what we all have to deal with more than like, you know, his mom doesn't like me or my mom doesn't like him. Mama's boys. And maybe Peter is one, maybe he isn't. But regardless, we're gonna break down what's going on behind the scenes, the psychology of why he chose the way he did, and what we can do if we find ourselves dating a mama's boy or whether or not we should avoid them all together. I'll break it down. But first, just want to remind you guys to click like and subscribe here on the channel. Turn on notifications so you're amongst the first Shaliner to watch the video when it comes out. And like I said, my phone corrects Shaliner to Showerliner. So if you guys prefer that as your fan name, I am more than happy to call you guys Showerliners going from here on out. That's fine. <clears throat> also, if you have a love question, find me on my website, shallonlester.com and click get help for help ASAP and follow me on Instagram at shallonxo. All right, we're back to my COVID couture, which is a variety of hoodies and I'm trotting out of my childhood bedroom closet. Each one uglier and grubbier than the last. This one says, Frisco Gun Club is my favorite gun club in the world. I love guns, but I love guns in a shooting range, not just walking around on the street. Don't run up on me though, because you don't know what I got. I got some. So, <coughs> Peter, <coughs> excuse me. This season of The Bachelor, which I don't watch because ugh, I don't hate myself that much, was promised to be like an ending unlike anything you've ever seen, blah, blah, blah. And the big rumor is that Peter was actually dating one of the producers. She's vague with no face and no real name. I don't know. I'm sure it was like Ashley, Ali Ajay, Ash, Kaitlan, I, whatever. It was some human person name. And that was something that host Chris Harrison didn't exactly try to quash. Like he was always like, oh, maybe. But now that the season has ended and that kind of like didn't go anywhere, then the producer chick, she's like, no, that's not true. But it was just very fishy. But <clears throat> that wasn't what got everyone talking and that wasn't the big scoop that they were promoting. It was basically Peter made a whole switcheroo at the end. So this dude is like, it's like if Pepsi 3D printed a white person, he's just the most white, talk about vague with no face. Like I have looked at him many times. He could be in the room right now. I would have no idea. He is like the, the man without a face. His name is Peter Weber. Again, a 3D printed Pepsi name. That's not a human name. That nobody named Peter Weber. It's like a, like a loaf of bread, a loaf of white bread came to life. It's like, my name is Peter Weber. Oh, hello boys and girls. And he's a pilot, which I also don't find like a sexy profession. Like if he was a fighter pilot, okay. But if you're like, uh, folks, welcome to flight to 489 Delta heading out from Sioux City to Chicago. Uh, flying time is going to be one hour, 32 minutes. Look at a uh, wind out of the north, northeast. Going to have a cloud formation and a low pressure system over, uh, over Kentucky. We're going to go. Shut the fuck up. I don't care. This isn't interesting to me. Like, I'm, I don't hear that voice and I'm like, yeah, daddy, pilot daddy. Like, you could get me maybe free flights, but okay. So he's got a boring job. 
a hard job, but not one I want to hear about. <clears throat> and he's got a boring name and he's got a boring face. And it's like, he's one of those dudes. You know how some dudes they give off like sex like jason momoa lenny kravitz like and they're harry styles and you just like see the sex ooze off of them and you can just picture what they're like in bed peter's that way but on like the opposite end of the spectrum he gives off this just like cocktail wiener vienna sausage vibe that i'm like i feel like it's one of those penises that no matter how hard it gets it's never really like hard hard <laughs> Peter, if you ever see this, I'm sorry. I'm sure you're a perfectly nice person. I just, it was just so funny watching, because I watched the finale, like the last two episodes, and people were like, you know, he's he shouldn't pick Madison, because, oh, so here are the two girls. <clears throat> Hannah Ann, Hannah Ann Sluss, like also printed by Pepsi, or like a Michael's craft store. Like she was printed by Joanne Fabrics. Hannah Ann Sluss, right? It's like a character on Saturday Night Live who sells ribbon. And so she was the one, like, the parents loved her. Everyone loved her. Oh, my God, such a good girl, such a good fit. And then Madison was, like, she's 23, like, saving myself for marriage. Girl, you ain't going to wear out if you get laid once or twice. Trust me on that, okay? It's not how it works. You're not a bar of soap. <clears throat> and Peter, P Peter's friends were like, this isn't going to work because Peter likes to have sex a lot. And that's when they lost me. I was like, he does? <laughs> really because that's really not the vibe I get from him I and I date like pretty basic white dudes like I'm not like well I only date like Polynesian you know like sex Hawaiian gods hi babe um but yeah I just get a very bland vibe from homeboy so I was like really because I kind of think he would vibe well with Madison but if everyone who knows him is like you like to bone she won't do it this isn't gonna work there's something to be said there. And his mom was very, very vocal about her choice, Barb. And aren't Barb's always full of opinions? You never need to ask what Barb is thinking. Barb will tell you. She'll tell the manager. So Barb made it be known that she thought Madison was like basically too Christian for her mostly non-denominational uh, fucking son, <clears throat> just like this, her sex machine of a son. And was like, it's not gonna work, we're team Hannah, Hannah Ann, we're team Hannah Ann, and you, you gotta pick her, and he didn't. And it was just, it's an interesting, like, kind of psychological study on people cutting off their nose to spite their face, as my mama would always say. You know, it's like where you make a choice just to prove it to someone, but you're actually just hurting yourself in the process. And it could be that he genuinely did like Madison the best, and felt this connection with her because she bowed out. She was the one, she's like, I don't think this is gonna work. And she's like, okay, I'm, I, I'm gonna dip. And Hannah Ann was like, I love you. And he's like, about that. You know, he proposed and then he's like, yikes. And so then they reunited and he got back together with Madison. And then literally, it seems like two days later or something, they announced that they were off. And Peter was like, my mom didn't have anything to do with it. Imagine being a grown man and have to say that sentence. It wasn't my mom. I made this choice myself. I made it myself. Okay, Peter Weber. Hi, boys and girls. So him and Madison went down in a ball of flames. I think probably because he thought he could like talk her into the old in out in out, and she was like, "Nope, this is who I am." Look, I don't understand waiting until you're married to have sex. I'm gonna drive a car before I buy it. But do you, boo? If that's what you want to do, I don't care. You know, it's, no, hey. It's better for me. You're in, you're not taking food off my plate now, right? You know, you're not real competition. I got it. So I'm proud of her for standing up for her boundaries, and that was her stand. That's what she wants for herself. Good for her. <clears throat> um, and I understand why he was also like, okay, I'm not gonna like pretend. I'm not gonna cosplay as a Christian boy because that's not authentic to me either. But it's interesting to think about mama's boys, right? Because. When you hear, oh, he's a mama's boy, you think, oh, yay. And then you date one and you're like, oh my God, that one, Barb, here she comes again, right? So there's pros and there's cons to dating mama's boys. Let's break them down. First of all, you gotta figure out, is he a mama's boy because he's close with his mom because of like a family, a situation in the family specific to the family? Like he didn't have a dad, so it's a single mom and that's why they're super bonded. Or is it a matter of like a cultural thing? Is he Jewish? Is he Indian? You know, 
Jewish boys are mama's boys. And I used to almost exclusively date Jewish boys because they were mama's boys. Like I'm super close with my mom. I'm a super family person. And I loved being, I loved dating someone who felt that way too. And who was really like close with their mom and everything. Jewish guys are Democrats. I've got really big penises. You know, they're just, I mean, they're the chosen people all the way around. But it became clear to me, well, very late in the game, I suffered many broken hearts that like, I as like a girl who was raised Baptist, was not Barb's favorite, you know? I was not going to be the one he brought home to Jacqueline. I, you know, and and this and this is why there's the distinction because like if that's if that's the kind of mama's boy they are, if they have like parents who are very religious or, you know, very cultural or whatever, people kind of oh, guys and girls, people tend to do what their family expects, you know? myself included you know i don't really make a lot of decisions that my mom is very very against like i can count on one hand and one of those decisions was buying detergent she told me not to buy like i don't do it i'm lucky that i have like a wonderful mother who's sane and you know she's not driven by some bizarre dogma or whatever you know she's not like in a cult but other people don't have that you know some people they are dealing with super religious parents or super like culturally adherent parents or first generation immigrant parents who like you're gonna do things the way we did it in the old country and you're gonna have it whatever <clears throat> it's very very hard to break away from that you know and you always i've talked about this in videos with like megan markle and prince harry like do you want a guy who is super contrary to the family and who is super like I'm distancing myself from my family and baby girl you're my new family now Ugh, that's a lot of pressure that's a lot of pressure and for manipulative toxic people like Meghan Markle they like that it's not pressure it's control Ooh, I want that control I have better things to do with my time than control a man okay I'm controlling this YouTube channel I'm controlling the hearts and minds of boys everywhere but one specific man and being his everything <sighs> no thank you I want to date someone who has a healthy relationship with their family I have a very small family and so I love the idea of getting close to someone else's family and with my last breakup that was really really painful for me to not go not only let go of him but let go of his parents because we all loved each other our parents my mom loved his parents and we spent Christmas together he was texting a, another girl during that time <laughs> don't worry but <clears throat> that was I mean that was like something that you grieve but it's hard to find a balance between a dude who is like very um you know close with his family but still has healthy boundaries because if you're not if you're dating someone with unhealthy boundaries not only did they did they might in turn erode your boundaries because they're like i don't know she wants us to come over every tuesday for dinner how can i say no and it's like great so I, now my boundaries are eroded because i didn't want to do that i didn't agree to this and now i have to be the bitch who's like no jacqueline we're not coming over because, you know, Peter Weber won't do it. It's like, so now his problems are your problems. And then you get resentful. You get eroded in your own, <clears throat> you know, lane and your own path. It's a mess, right? So it's hard to find a balance. And it's hard to know who you're dealing with. How do you know if you're dealing with a mama's boy or somebody who has healthy boundaries? I'm a big believer in if you give someone enough rope, they'll hang themselves. Give someone room to reveal who they are, right? And <clears throat> this requires objectivity. And objectivity comes from dating from a place of strength where I like you, but I don't need you. I'm going to listen to what you have to say, but I'm not going to fill in the blanks and fill in the gaps from what you're telling me. And I'm not going to fill it in with all of these wonderful things I'm projecting. My hands are so dry, I need to put lotion on. This is like CBD lotion. Is CBD just bullshit? I feel like it must be, I don't know. I have CBD gummies and I was like, I, I would rather have regular gummies, they would do more for me. <clears throat> so we have to not fill in the blanks, right? Like if he says he's close with his mom, oh my God, he's a wonderful family man and he wants kids and he wants to settle down right away. Mm? So a good question to ask is, tell me about the times you've disappointed your family and see what he says. Don't offer examples. Don't give him like, like, you know, like, did you buy a detergent? Or did you get a tattoo that you don't like? Because what you wanna see is how he interprets this. You wanna see his scale of disappointment. Is it, um, 
I walked out on my family when I went away to college and I, I never spoke to them again. Is it like big or is it like, oh, I got a tattoo of Woody Woodpecker on my arm and my mom was like furious at me for two years? You know, like <clears throat> see where it is and then kind of draw your own conclusions because like a mama's boy, hmm, how do we, how do we describe this? So there's some warning signs that you might be dealing with a mama's boy in not a great way because what it's going to come down to is another woman in his life right did you guys see sex in the city where like charlotte is dealing with trey's mother bunny and she was like i am the lady of this house no more mallards i always think about that it's like we're pack animals right and there can only be one alpha and in a man's life it's like he's got to make a choice at some point whether it's going to be the woman in his life or his mom you know and that's tough and we all kind of have to make that distinction and separation as we grow up that's part of growing up and it's healthy no animal stays with its parent the whole time except for killer whales they can do whatever they want but for the most part like they grow up they literally leave the nest they go build a nest of their own with their own partner you know they make the choice of of that so here are some warning signs that maybe you're dealing with a guy who's more or less still breastfeeding. You can't say boo about his mama. You can't say anything even slightly negative about her. And look, to a degree, of course we don't want someone who's gonna shit talk our parents. Like, I can talk trash, you know, I can complain. But if someone's like, yeah, I know your mom is crazy. Would you say come a little, come within striking distance? You know, but if you're saying like, you know, my mom's being manipulative. You can be like, you know, I have noticed that. And I, you know, I see her doing these things to you because we've all been in the inverse situation where someone's complaining about someone and you do slightly agree and they turn on you and it's like, well, then what am I doing here, dude? But am, am I just like a warm body that you're talking at? I'm trying to help you and I'm trying to validate how you're feeling and like find a solution for this. But if you're going to jump down my throat and that's another thing, he'll never confront his mom or say no to her but he's fine getting angry at you. And that's twisted because you think like, oh, he's so good with his mom, he's so tolerant, he's so patient, and suddenly the hurricane towards you and you're like, wait, what? He's, he's not like kind and low key and you know has a good temper. He's just only has a bad temper with me. And then you feel really, really resentful. It's like, well, what is it about me? Do you think I'm either a wuss? And we see this dynamic with dudes who have baby mamas, right? Or ex-wives. I have friends who are dealing with this where it's like they have, their boyfriend has a, an ex-wife baby mama who they walk on eggshells around. But then with their girlfriend, with my friend, it's like all bets are off, gloves are off. It's like they're in the octagon all the time. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, why am I the punching bag? Well, what we permit, we promote, you know? And clearly they grew up with a mother who didn't permit much in terms of like being a dissident. So if that comes up, it's like, you don't speak to me like that. And if you wanna complain about your mother and I have to sit here like a bump on a log, you go tell it to somebody else. I don't appreciate this. This isn't a fun conversation for me. Oh, you, you like strong women? Welcome to the party. Welcome to the gun show. <clears throat> and this is the big one. If you think there was a, an issue between the mom and you, he's gonna always take the mom's side regardless of logic, regardless of fallout with you, he's always going to defend her. And again, like that's not necessarily a negative trait. Like we want someone who's going to stick up for their family, but also 
if you're in a serious relationship with someone, you gotta be their priority. And I'm saying this from a place of shame and guilt and hypocrisy because I'm a mama's girl and my mother is the most important person on planet Earth. I love everyone I know. Everyone on planet Earth can die but her. Like that's the only person I care about at the end of the day. And it that was an issue in my marriage because I was not great at compromising. You know, it was it was like spend Christmas with my husband's family and I was like no no you know and like you can't be like that when you're married like you have to you have to bend and I wasn't good at that and that's not I mean my marriage ended so okay you know kind of maybe learn my lesson there but if you're dealing with someone like that, that is what psychologists sort of say that this adds up to. It's not that like you're dealing with a bad person, but you are dealing with someone who is limited, okay? And you have to decide if those limitations are acceptable to you, you know? Because if he's gonna kowtow to his mother all the time, guess what, girl? She's gonna expect you to fall in line too. She's gonna expect to rule the roost in your home. She's gonna come in, she's not gonna knock, she's not gonna call for her, she's gonna give your kids the food you don't want them to have, whatever it might be. This is her world and you are living in it. And if that doesn't sound good to you, get out. Because it's probably not gonna change a ton. Not to say that it can't. I was actually talking to somebody the other day and she's a psychologist and she's like, I had a client who was, his dad was like super wealthy, like a hotelier and his, but was like an alcoholic and just a shitty guy. And my client, a, a, a man, was very, very close with his mother because he always like protected her and they were very, very close. But he realized that his mother was ruining all of his romantic relationships because whenever he would get close to a girl, the mom would feel threatened and she'd sabotage it, you know? Or she would like purposely give him bad advice. Like, oh yeah, I want you to choose the Hannah Ann because she interpreted the Hannah Ann as being easily manipulated and not really a threat or She's not gonna stick around for too long. I mean, this is gonna crash and burn and then all oh, my babies come back to me. There's this Amy Schumer bit. I died when I heard it. She, she was talking about meeting her ex-boyfriend's mom for the first time. And she's like, whenever you meet a guy's mother, they have, it's almost this vibe of, I wish I'd gotten to have sex with him first. You know, like, oh, you guys go on, no. I thought I was gonna fuck him. No, you guys have fun at the concert, it's okay. And I was like, dying like this. Yes, it's like, it's like you're stealing someone's boyfriend, but they know that he was gone, okay. It's wild, you know? And so the, the guy who my psychologist friend was telling him about, the son of the hotelier with the mom who was sabotaging things, he like went to rehab. He like went to a, an intensive psychology therapy week to dismantle this and to put some distance between him and his mom and to get tools on how to deal with this. Cause he's like, I wanna get married. I wanna have a family, but I still want my origin family. I don't want to have to pick. And I, he recognized that he was the problem, you know? And that's what we do here. And that's hard to do is be like, you know what? If I'm having issues with boundaries with one person and boundaries with another person, guess who's the common denominator? It me. We can't change moms. You can't change your Peter Weber. You know, you can't change the bar, but you can change what you're permitting and what you're promoting. And so if you're dealing with a guy who's like this, you can sit him down and be like, hey, you need to make some sort of a choice about how you're going to reconcile two strong women in your life who you love, because I'm not going to be a second class citizen in my own relationship. And I'm not going to stand these snide remarks from Barb every time we're at dinner because she liked Hannah Ann better and you picked me. So get good with this or I'm going to get good with someone else. And then you got to let him rope to hang themselves. You got to let them see what they do. You know, let them see. Let, uh, you know what I mean. See what they do. The I feel like I'm having a stroke. Words. Am I having a stroke? I'm feeling different. Huh. Give someone enough room to reveal their character and reveal where they stand. Because we can't always listen to what somebody says. We gotta watch what they do. Talk, as they say, is cheap.
and so were all of the dresses those girls wore on The Bachelor. Anyway, for more, click like and subscribe. I'm going to be trying to pump out a video every day for y'all because I know we're all bored and trapped inside with no one to talk to except for Shallon Lester on the internet. And if you want to talk more to me, find me on my website at shallonlester.com and click get help. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at shallonxl. Mwah!